hello everybody of YouTube and my wet heads. So I saw that some new information for Sonic Forces has been released and I wanted to talk about it. So the music for Sonic Forces has been very hit and miss for me. I like some songs better than others and I mainly miss metal. I love that style of music for Sonic. I just think it just makes Sonic seem more cool. And that's what I liked about Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 with that the the songs, especially uh, the final boss song for Sonic Adventure 2, which is, which is Live and Learn and Open Your Heart, just makes Sonic seem really cool and it just makes the situation seem more intense and all that cool stuff. And Sonic's theme in Sonic Adventure 1 was a bit more, not metal per se, but just a bit more, I guess you could say, uh, hard rock kind of sounding. And then they changed that to be more punk. And while I feel like the punk genre fits Sonic's personality more, I just prefer the hard rock version in Sonic Adventure 1. And I'm mentioning all of this because we finally have metal back as a genre of music for Sonic games with Infinite. And there's this video I saw yesterday called uh, Enter Infinite and you get to hear um, his voice actor which sounds like the English voice actor for Gara from Naruto. It's it's basically his exact same voice, which is not as raspy. And you get to hear a theme song. Now, I was a little, I guess you could say, deceived at first. When I first heard the theme song, I heard a techno bit. I'm thinking, oh, okay, it's gonna be like most other Sonic themes, like how um, I feel like ever since Sonic Colors, they got more techno and more pop based and I like techno, but you know, I just miss rock and I feel like, you know, I don't like it. It just sort of went and just disappeared after the Adventure Era. Like, you didn't really hear rock music as often in Sonic, in my opinion. And that's what I was thinking when I heard that. I think, oh, okay, it's going to be another, you know, kind of like Sonic Colors theme. It's going to be a bit more techno based with just a little light electric guitar here and there, you know, nothing really cool, you know, in my opinion. And then the guitar kicks in. You hear this extremely loud distortion, which is what makes the guitar have that loud scratchy sound, which is what you hear in metal. And then I'm like, oh my god, okay, it's back. We finally got some metal back in uh, Sonic Forces. And what was especially cool for me is when I heard the uh, singer, when you get past the rapper, and you go to the part where it's just the singer um, it sounds a lot like a few indie bands that I've heard over the years. So that gave it a really nice kind of personal touch for me and I'm thinking, oh my god, this is a lot like some indie bands I've seen. This sounds a lot like some indie bands I've, you know, uh, heard before. And I like that. And, um, some people are saying that, oh, it's, it's edgy and it's cheesy or whatever. And I really don't care. I like the lyrics. I, I like how it's kind of metaphorical, like saying, I am the sharpest of knives, I am the harshest of waves. He is describing himself as the top of the top. He is the best. He is the most intense out of, like, everything. He is, you know, the r roughest of waves. He is the sharpest of knives. He is the best of the best. He is the most intense out of all intense things, you know, and I like that. And people are there, you know, just think it's design, you know, I, I keep seeing this on the internet where people are like, oh, he's edgy, and this design is edgy, or whatever, and when was liking a dark and intense character a bad thing? And I already know people are going to mock me for that, because I already got mocked for that on Facebook, but I really don't give a crap. I like what I like, and if you don't like it, you need to just get over it and leave me alone. Because I'm not going to change what I like to please you. So... I've always been drawn to more dark and serious characters, like Zuko from Avatar The West Airbender, he's more serious, more withdrawn, more reserved, he's not as emotional, he's not as over the top and silly like Aang, and he is, for the most part, a very reserved guy, he doesn't really show facial expressions. And then when he does, just like me, people in real life could even you know, tell you this is legit, uh, just like me, 
it's very subtle, very slight changes in my face. That's why I also like characters like Witten the Pokemon. That's why I'm using Witten as my logo, because it's just like Witten. I, too, have that very serious look on my face. I am a lot like those kind of serious, dark characters, and that's why I relate to that. Another thing that I relate to with these more uh, dark, quote-unquote, characters is that they are more reserved, so they show that also in just their posture. One thing that Shadow the Hedgehog and also Infinite have in common, and also some anime characters do this kind of gesture too, where they're not crossing their arms per se, but they put their arms together, and they put their hands resting against each arm. And it's just sort of like a this reserved posture where you're not letting people really look at your full body per se, where you're kind of cutting off the chest area. It's a more defensive stance, kind of like the crossing your arms gesture, but not as aggressive looking, in my opinion. And again, that is something that I also do. It's just a reserved posture, a reserved gesture that people that are reserved tend to do. Granted, not everyone does that, but that's, you know, the point. These quote-unquote edgy, dark characters are very reserved, they're not emotional, and that shows in their posture, how they stand, how their body language, how they position their arms, their hands, all these little things are things I relate to because I may also describe to be a dark, and even some people call me edgy on the internet too, so I relate to that, and that's okay. So, I like that. I like Shadow, I like Infinite. I like Zuko, I like Gladian from Pokemon Sun and Moon, and hell, I wish I had his hoodie. I really like his hoodie, and I feel like they need to sell that at Hot Topic or something. I think that would be awesome. But my point is, there's nothing wrong with liking Infinite. There's nothing wrong with liking his theme song. There's nothing wrong with liking his design. There's nothing wrong with liking his voice, which is a very serious and tense voice. Um, and again, I got marked for that, but I'm going to explain why I feel the way I do, and that's because it is a serious voice. If you heard someone like that talking to you in real life, that would be, I mean, not intimidating per se, not for me, but I think for other people that would be, because it just comes off as, you know, this person has like a hidden layer of aggression to them, that someone like Infinite, that kind of voice can just easily try to hurt you or, I don't know, like, it just has this really nice, kind of quiet, really, um, kind of dark, serious tone to it, you know, I like it a lot. Like, if anything, I feel like they should have gotten him to voice Shadow. I hate Shadow's normal voice, and I feel like Infinite's voice would fit Shadow more, since, you know, uh, they're not gonna bring Jason Griffith back, I feel like that would be a good substitute. I just like that kind of voice, that more kind of quiet, soft, but kind of mysterious, uh, whispery voice. And there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like on the internet, people especially act like if your opinion doesn't match theirs, then you're wrong, or you're stupid, and you know, uh, whatever, people should make fun of you because you don't think the way that people do. And that's stupid, immature, and pathetic, and pointless. You can like whatever the hell you want to like, and there's nothing wrong with you liking a dark and more serious character. And, uh, this is something I also had to explain to people again. Clearly don't know crap about character design on Facebook. Whether you like it or not, Infinite does have a intense character design. This is going back to my Sonic Forces video about character design. Sharp pointy angles are used to emphasize that a character is very intense or menacing looking. Scar from The Lion King is a perfect example of that. He still has the white portions of a normal lion, but they're exaggerated to look very sharp and angular to give Scar a very menacing, very disappointing, jagged look compared to the more somewhat realistic build of Mufasa and, and Simba. Again, to emphasize, there's something very off about Scar. He has a very pointy, very sharp, kind of tense look to him. Another perfect example is Hades from Hercules, the Disney movie. Out of all the gods and goddesses from the Greek-influenced movie, the only one with a very, very sharp, angular design is Hades, again. To emphasize that menacing look. 
The only other exception I can think of is arguably Crash Bandicoot. He has a very sharp, angular design, but he's not evil per se. He's just crazy. Uh, you know, just look at his face. He looks crazy. He has a very sharp, angular design, very sharp ears, sharp, pointy eyebrows, sharp hair, sharp, pointy snout, sharp, angular body. His body basically curves into almost like a triangle. He is a very pointy. And that's again to emphasize he has a very menacing, aggressive, crazy look. So does Infinite. This all goes back to Infinite. He has a very pointy, jagged face, pointy ears. He has those little pointy, kind of curly hairs off the top side of his head. He does, whether you like it or not, he does have an aggressive design to him, and that's the point. That's why a lot of cartoon characters that are villains are drawn with pointy, angular designs to make them look more aggressive and mean compared to the cutesy good guy hero. And I have always been drawn towards the angular, pointy designs. I love Scar's design from The Lion King. I love Hades' design from Hercules. I've always liked the more scary, dark, intense, jagged looking designs. And there's nothing wrong with that. People need to learn to accept that and that it's okay to like something dark, you know. Moving on from that, I also noticed um, there's some issues with the animation for Sonic Forces, at least in my opinion. For those of you who don't know the difference when I say animation, I'm not referring to the character, I'm not referring to how Sonic looks, I'm referring to how he moves. Animation is how the character moves. When Sonic is charging towards Infinite, it feels really, really slow to me, and then Tails being a freaking moron again, it's like, OH MY GOD, YOU BASTARD, SONIC! Really, Tails? With how slow Sonic was moving in that cutscene, anybody could be faster than the fastest thing alive. Here's what I would have done. I mean, it just feels really jarring to me. Like, I feel like the cutscene looks unfinished or something. Like, I feel like he should be moving faster. He just did this really fast, you know, uh, charge, this, you know, um, kind of blast sonic boom whatever towards infinite and yet it feels really slow and then again he uh, jumps up in the air and when he jumps up in the air he again feels really slow he's hanging in the air for a few seconds before infinite hits him and it just looked really odd to me i really hope they uh redo that cutscene i really hope they i don't know just change it a bit and then um make sonic move faster and add more detail to Sonic's model. Sonic's model, especially uh, the hedgehog quills, the blue quills, whatever, it looks very plain. I mean, yeah, he's a cartoon little animal, so you can even you know, get away with him when he's simplistic. But even Sonic Generations, if you looked really, really closely at the model, he had little hairs. He had little blue hairs to represent that, you know, he has fur. That's supposed to be fur. But then in Sonic Forces, he looks like he has practically no fur at all. It looks really awkward. It looks really weird. Um, I don't like it. I hope they go back and add some detail to the model. I hope they go back and add um, more detail to the quills. I also don't like Sonic's voice. I don't know why, but he just sounds really, really odd to me in the cutscene. And I felt like Roger Craig Smith was getting his Sonic voice better in Sonic Generations. His voice was more higher pitched. And that helped him sound younger, because Sonic is supposed to be a teenager. So, I don't know, I just don't like freaking Sonic's voice. I don't... Well, Tails, he sounds okay. I just... I got used to how he sounded in Sonic Colors, so it feels weird that, again, his voice changed. Like, why? Why do you keep changing his voice? Like, if you're gonna settle on a certain sound for his voice, you know, then why are you changing it all of a sudden? I don't like it. Whatever. I don't care. Anyway, um, I think um, Infinite is cool. I like his theme song. I like his uh, design. I hope he is really, really hard. Because that's another thing that Sonic has been doing really bad lately. His bosses suck. And I really hope that uh, they fix that. This is an issue that, in my opinion, has been going back all the way to Sonic Adventure. Because even Perfect Chaos, once you memorize the attack pattern, that's it. He he's he's done. Like it's actually really not that hard. Perfect chaos is more just spectacle, just looking really cool, and that's really it. And I feel like the same thing applies 
to the Bio Wizard and Sonic Generation 2, and freaking Time Meter and Sonic Generations. You know, so I really hope they break that and actually make uh, Infinite actually hard to kill and actually really challenging in his boss fight towards the end. His cutscene shows that this guy is super aggressive and actually beats the crap out of Sonic, so I want to see that. I want to really, you know, punch Sonic, kick Sonic, throw those little cubes at Sonic and, you know, hurt him. Like, I want this guy to be super aggressive and just be what Shadow could have been. Shadow, you know, just did the little homing attack and whatever. He never really got that vital. He actually punched Sonic in the face. That was in the anime Sonic X, but not in the game. So I want to see that kind of aggression with the boss fight too, hopefully. Anyway, this is when fire going away. Um, this is making me look forward to Sonic Forces more. I think Infinite School, and um, we'll see how this game turns out. You know, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping it'll be good, but with Sega, you never know. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time. Bye.